In a race, no one will be foolish enough to draw a path for their opponent to develop, so that at some point, they become the strongest. However, for SpaceX, it is an exception. As a great winner, they don't care about the competition. They even assist their competitors in the market that constitutes their main source of income. This is unprecedented situation in the history of space exploration. And what SpaceX just did to Blue Origin Europe and Russia will leave you mind blown. Find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX is dominating the majority of the rocket launch market with a fleet of reusable rockets proven to fly at a pace unmatched by competitors and at a lower cost. According to data from Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist tracking space activity, the company's rockets provided 66% of customer flights from U.S. launch sites in 2022 and handled 88% in the first six months of this year. This is a significant market share compared to the rest of the world. It can be said that SpaceX currently holds the dominant position in the global launch market. SpaceX's grip on the launch business means that many government agencies and satellite operators must tether their ambitions to the company's timetables and capabilities. Most launches ferry different kinds of satellites to orbit, where they do everything from providing internet service in remote areas to tracking weather and capturing images of Earth. Some satellite companies' competitors reluctantly have to pay SpaceX to launch devices that help them compete with SpaceX's Starlink satellite broadband service. The best evidence is what SpaceX has already done. Since the beginning of 2023, SpaceX has conducted over 90 launches for its Starlink business, 65% of its total, with the rest launching satellites for other companies along with government missions. They launched most of the remaining satellites for the One Web Group to compensate for the shortfall in the number of launches compared to the initial launch target. In total, One Web will orbit 640 interconnected satellites to provide global internet coverage. This is an identical business model to SpaceX's Starlink project. Starlink, however, is a far larger system. Starlink currently has over 400,000 subscribers, and SpaceX has launched a total of 2,700 LEO satellites into orbit. However, 750,000 pre-orders for Starlink's satellite internet have been submitted to SpaceX, and the company's still working to fulfill all these orders by the end of the year. The plan calls for 12,000 total satellites in orbit. A later extension of the network could expand Starlink to 42,000 satellites. To put its constellation in space, OneWeb was relying on the Russian state space agency Roscosmos. That partnership ended once Russia invaded Ukraine in early 2022. This resulted in economic sanctions against it from the EU as well as other allied nations. After OneWeb lost the ability to lift its satellites from the former Soviet Union, it eventually turned to SpaceX. Previously, the two companies had been at minor loggerheads over their competing systems. Since they became partners, that tune has changed. Musk has said that the company has launched satellites for competitors. He said if SpaceX had a goal of blocking rivals, it wouldn't have done the launches for OneWeb. We charge them the same as anyone else. In addition to OneWeb, SpaceX also receives a significant number of orders from many of its other competitors. Telesat and SpaceX have a 14-launch agreement to launch Telesat's Canada Advanced Telesat Lightspeed LEO satellites. Both of these are pretty much competitors to Starlink. It is, of course, a very uncomfortable situation where you have a supplier that wanted to go down the value chain and start competing with its own customers, said Christian Patoro, chief executive of Pacific, a satellite internet company focused on Asia and the Pacific region. SpaceX launched a satellite for Pacific in 2019. Englewood, Colorado-based satellite internet company EcoStar hired SpaceX to blast into orbit EcoStar's roughly 9-ton Jupiter-3 satellite, intended to give the company more broadband capacity for residential customers, businesses, and other clients in the Americas. EcoStar has faced heightened competition from Starlink, executives at the company have said. Paul Gask, operations chief at EcoStar, said when the company settled on Jupiter-3's design, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy was the only rocket ready to handle the flight on Echo Star's preferred timetable. Really, you have to be practical about what's demonstrated and going, Gask said. SpaceX's launch division has shown its capacity and flexibility is setting at a party set. Moreover, a peculiar case involves Amazon, which is considered the bigger brother of Blue Origin, a competitor at odds with SpaceX. Amazon's been sued by some investors of the Kuiper satellite program for not using SpaceX to launch the Kuiper project. 
They argued that failing to do so significantly delayed the progress, thus affecting the company's revenue potential. This issue initially stems from the relationship between Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, and the current leadership of the company. They were lukewarm about SpaceX and their initial choices, and if they didn't hand over the rocket launch job to SpaceX, they'd have to write hefty checks to other launch operators in the West. However, what the Kuiper Project relies on are entirely unflown vehicles, rockets that have been in operation for many years. This includes ULA's Vulcan Centaur, Blue Origin's New Glenn, and the Ariane 6 developed by Ariane Group and operated by Ariane Space. Common technical challenges in rocket development sometimes pose difficulties for all three of these types of rockets, making it hard for them to keep up with SpaceX, if not impossible. We are, for the first time, really in the history of launch, in a situation where there's scarcity. ULA Chief Executive Tori Bruno said in an industry event in March, adding that for the last three decades, there has been an oversupply in launch capacity. This will persist for many years. In an emergency situation, when Amazon aims to catch up with SpaceX's Starlink and meet deadlines set by the Federal Communications Commission on July 30, 2026, to launch the majority of 3,236 Kuiper satellites, Amazon is forced to rely on its own competitor. To be honest, there's certainly room in the LEO internet market for competition without hurting Starlink, and launching such things helps SpaceX's bottom line as well, so they have been and are quite willing to launch for their competitors. Add in the irony that the money their competitors would pay for a launch can be used to help Starlink, and it's a pretty nice situation. The same story applies to the aspect of SpaceX's astronaut transportation services. They are also the only company that transports NASA astronauts to and from the International Space Station. They've gradually taken over this role from Russia's Soyuz rockets. Although still competitors, the Astronaut Exchange Program is regularly conducted with Russian astronauts having a seat on SpaceX's Dragon and vice versa. To be honest, in such a vast market, competition is inevitable. Therefore, the success of a company is not only determined by its innovation and technical development, but also by how it faces its competitors. Elon Musk's perspective on competitive rivals is very different from other leaders. For Musk, he recognizes that the more people focus on a problem, the better. Strong competition almost always yields better results for everyone. For example, competition drives in innovators to improve their ideas and build better things. In a deep dive into space on X in June, Musk said, We don't really think about the competition, indicating that SpaceX is currently more focused on Starship, the giant rocket they are developing, rather than worrying too much about competition. SpaceX executives have said that the company plans to increase launches this year, aiming to conduct 100 flights compared with 61 in 2022. Tom Mochinero, Senior Vice President for SpaceX's commercial business, said at the March industry event that reaching 200 launches a year is possible. We have the hardware, we have the infrastructure, we can scale the staffing, he said. McKinsey consultants said a capacity crunch for larger rockets in the next few years also depends in part on SpaceX's Starship. If Starship doesn't ramp up as expected, there will likely be a shortage unless SpaceX allocates more of its Falcon fleet for customers instead of Starlink, they said in a report. And that's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.